Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. On September 9th, I put out a video about how Rolls-Royce may have killed Boom Supersonic. Because it was then that Rolls-Royce, who signed on to be the original engine builder for Boom, officially and permanently withdrew from the program. But it wasn't only yours truly that thought this, because everybody in the aviation world thought this signaled the end of Boom Supersonic. Because in addition to Rolls-Royce, every other possible engine maker on Earth declined Boom's offer to supply engines for their supersonic Overture Dreamjet. But apparently, Boom, much like the Phoenix, has risen from the ashes, as they have finally announced that they have found a manufacturer to produce the engines for Boom's Overture supersonic passenger aircraft. I'm going to tell you who Boom picked to power their little super jet, but I'm also going to tell you why, even with the apparent great news that the Boom supersonic dream may still never actually be realized. That's next on Maximus. Greetings, everybody. Maximus here. Well, on Tuesday, December 13th, Denver, Colorado-based startup jet builder Boom Supersonic announced that their four-engine overture would be powered by what they are calling the Symphony Engine, the new Boom-led propulsion system that will be designed and optimized specifically for the plane. According to Boom, it will partner with three companies to produce the power plants, including Florida Turbine Technologies, which is part of Kratos Defense and Security Solutions to assist with the design. Boom also picks Standard Aero for maintenance, and the General Electric subsidiary GE Additive for consulting on metal additive manufacturing, which is just a fancy name for 3D printing. While Florida Turbine Technologies, or FTT, is not a widely known engine maker such as Rolls-Royce or Pratt & Whitney, the 20-plus-year-old engine maker has in the past been awarded multi-million dollar government contracts and has developed a turbojet for cruise missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles. Florida Turbine Technologies Company President Stacy Rock said that the team at FTT has a decades-long history of developing innovative high-performance propulsion solutions. He continued that we are proud to team with Boom and its Symphony partners and look forward to developing the first custom-made engine for sustainable, economical supersonic flight. Designed to operate on 100% sustainable aviation fuel, the new medium bypass turbofan engine will emit net zero carbon and features 35,000 pounds of takeoff thrust comprised of low weight materials and reduce overall operating cost by 10% compared to other supersonic engines. With the Symphony project already started, Boom says Overture, which was recently redesigned, will start production in 2024. Its first test flight is set for 2027, with type certification expected by 2029. Boom executive Blake Scholl said, Developing a supersonic engine specifically for Overture offers by far the best value proposition for our customers. Through the Symphony program, we can provide our customers with an economically and environmentally sustainable supersonic airplane, a combination unattainable with the current constraints of derivative engines and industry norms. The Colorado-based boom says that Symphony will be a twin-spool, medium-bypass turbofan engine, similar to conventional aircraft engines with no afterburner, and produce 35 pounds of thrust at takeoff. They also say that it will be the first engine to be built to run on 100% sustainable aviation fuel. Unlike subsonic turbofans, this new propulsion system will include a boom design axisymmetric supersonic intake, a variable geometry low noise exhaust nozzle, and a passively cooled high pressure turbine. Boom says the engine, which will propel Overture to Mach 1.7, about twice the speed of conventional aircraft, will also be compliant with FAA and EASA airworthiness standards. Boom's major engine announcement comes after the four major aircraft engine suppliers, Rolls-Royce, GE Aviation, Honeywell, and Saffron Aircraft Engines declined to build the engines for the startup, saying the venture for developing a new engine for the supersonic market was just too risky. Despite numerous questions about the viability of the project, 
Scholl has pointed to commitments from customers including American Airlines and United Airlines as proof the company's goals are realistic. In June 2021, United said it signed a commercial agreement including a deposit for an undisclosed amount to buy 15 overtures contingent on demanding safety operation and sustainability requirements with an option for 35 more. Then in August, American Airlines said it too had paid a non-refundable deposit, but didn't say how much, as part of an agreement to buy up to 20 of the jets with an option for 40 more. Virgin Atlantic and Japan Airlines also have pre-order agreements with Boom. The company's small XB-1 prototype known as the Baby Boom has already begun test flights in Colorado and is intended to demonstrate key technologies for safe and efficient high-speed flight. At the Farnborough Air Show in July 2022, Boom presented a new aircraft design showing a longer wingspan and a more contoured fuselage with four engines rather than the previously planned two. Still, Scholl insists Overture will be environmentally compatible offsetting the aircraft's carbon output by burning sustainable fuel. Scholl said the design of the Symphony engine is already underway, and Overture is on track to receive type certification by 2029. The company plans to begin production of the aircraft in Greensboro, North Carolina in 2024, with the first flight currently scheduled for 2027. According to Flight Global, Boom's other partners include Saffron Landing Systems, Collins Aerospace, fuel system company Eaton, and Northrop Grumman, which is helping with the military variant. So just when it appeared that all hope was lost, despite the setback of losing all major engine manufacturers, Boom still managed to pull a rabbit out of the hat and achieve its goal to secure an engine maker by year's end, giving hope to the jetliner's eventual commercial use. However, most aviation experts aren't too enthused by Boom's latest announcement. As a matter of fact, most people in the know in aviation think that the plane will never be built. Some reasons given for this doubt are that Boom's Overture has a very limited market, a relatively short flying range, and needs to fly over water due to excessive engine noise. Also, aviation experts point to history as an example. Consider the great and storied Concorde. Not one U.S. airline ever purchased the Concorde. No orders were placed by Pan Am, Continental, TWA, American Airlines, Eastern United, and Braniff. There were also orders from Qantas, Air India, Sabina, Air Canada, Lufthansa, and even Middle East Airlines and others which never came to fruition. Only British Airways and Air France actually took deliveries of the supersonic aircraft. The only other committed order came from Iran Air and that was cancelled after the Iranian Revolution. However, oddly, Braniff did briefly own Concords for a few hours at a time. They operated service between Dallas and Washington Dulles in conjunction with Air France and British Airways. But to do so, they were required to take ownership of the plane for the flight segment in order to operate under their own certificate of airworthiness. And finally, there's this. As long as supersonic travel is more expensive than subsonic, the market will be limited. And the amount of city pairs that can work with this plane is limited as well. Limited markets make it tough to recoup development and acquisition costs. Airlines have a hard time making money operating only a couple of aircraft models as it is. The plane needs to be capable of flying long distances, fuel efficiency, and carry large numbers of passengers in order to be economical on a large scale. So like I said, just when it looked like all hope was lost, Boom pulled a rabbit out of their hat and now has an engine maker for their supersonic dream plane. However, the question still remains, can that rabbit even hop, break the speed of sound, and make a profit, let alone fly? For that, we will have to wait and see. Well, that's all I have for now. What do you think about the Boom supersonic aircraft? Will it ever get off the ground? Or has the aviation world moved beyond the need for supersonic flight at all? Make sure to let me know down below. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and ring the bell. And remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you next time in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.